According to Reuters, the butchers in the Zinfadi wholesale food market, Beijing's largest, slouch on stools behind counters stacked with meat, occasionally looking up from their smartphone videos to call out to the few shoppers idly passing under the market's Lunar New Year decorations. This time last year, this hall would be squeezed so full of people that you could not move, said a pork seller named Lee, who used to sell 20 pigs a day in the holiday run-up but this year is selling just five a day. According to Bloomberg, U.S. bonds rebounded before a record $42 billion sale of 10-year treasuries after a solid start to this week's ramped-up issuance sizes. Stocks in Hong Kong were set to rally a second day on bets China will be more forceful to prop up markets. Following a sell-off that drove two-year yields to their highest since before the Fed's December pivot, a $54 billion sale of three-year U.S. notes drew solid demand, bolstering sentiment and making traders shrug off a slew of cautious remarks from Federal Reserve speakers. In New Zealand, yields on government debt rose after the nation's jobless rate rose less than forecast, adding to signs that the central bank could remain cautious about cutting interest rates. According to Reuters, Philippine conglomerate DMCI Holdings Inc. is in talks to acquire a unit of Mexican cement giant Semex, three sources familiar with the matter said on Wednesday. The deal will be worth more than the current 21 billion peso market capitalization of Semex Holdings Philippines, one source said. A banking source said it could reach as much as about 40 billion pesos. According to Reuters, restructuring experts from Alvarez Marcel will rely on China connections and a track record of complicated corporate overhauls as they try to engineer an outcome for property giant Evergrande that will involve creditors, authorities, and home buyers. Tiffany Wong and Eddie Middleton, both managing directors at AM, were appointed by a Hong Kong court last month after a liquidation petition was approved following about 18 months of talks with China Evergrande Group's offshore creditors. According to Bloomberg, Chinese stocks rose further Wednesday, extending a rally as hopes grew that authorities will take more forceful measures to sustain a nascent market recovery. The Hang Seng China Enterprises Index advanced 1.1%. The onshore benchmark CSI 300 index rose 0.2%, following a gain of 3.5% Tuesday. According to Reuters, Toyota Motor shares hit a record high on Wednesday after its earnings upgrade the prior day, with rivals Honda and Nissan also posting gains on expectations their solid hybrid lineups may benefit from cooling interest in electric vehicles. Weakening momentum for battery-powered vehicles has led many overseas automakers to scale back rollout plans for EVs or cut production targets as lower government subsidies and high interest rates make EV purchases harder for customers. According to Bloomberg, the Bank of Japan may scrap its negative interest rate policy as soon as March and make multiple hikes this year, adding to the bearish outlook for the nation's government bonds, according to Pacific Investment Management Company. The last adherent of sub-zero borrowing costs is expected to raise its benchmark to 0% in March or April, before hiking to 0.25% by year-end, PIMCO said in a Market Outlook report. Quickening wage growth is likely to create persistent inflation in the economy, ensuring supportive conditions for exiting negative rates, according to the $1.9 trillion money manager. According to Reuters, Australia's red meat exports rocketed last year as a plunge in livestock prices made its products more competitive at a time when beef production in rival exporter the United States is falling. Shipments accelerated as the year went on, pushing exports of sheep meat to a record high and beef exports to their highest since 2019, trade data showed. According to Reuters, Russia launched a missile strike on Kyiv and other Ukrainian cities during Wednesday morning rush hours, Ukraine's Air Force said with several blasts heard in the country's capital when air defense systems were engaged in repelling the attack. The loud blasts were heard in Kyiv just before 7 a.m., Reuters witnesses reported. According to Reuters, shares of Paytm climbed as much as 10% on Wednesday after media reported that the embattled digital payments firm's CEO had met India's finance minister and central bank to try to resolve a regulatory crackdown on its payments bank business. Paytm shares climbed as high as 496.25 rupees but remained far below their level before January 31, when the Reserve Bank of India ordered Paytm Payments Bank to stop accepting new deposits in its accounts and its popular digital wallets from March, citing supervisory concerns and non-compliance with rules.
According to Reuters, Asian stocks firmed on Wednesday as investors waited to see if Beijing's increasingly frantic efforts to prop up its sagging share markets would actually work, while bonds enjoyed a reprieve from recent selling. In recent days, China's regulators have announced further curbs on short selling and state investors said they were expanding their stock buying plans. According to Reuters, Japan's SoftBank Group is expected to post a net profit for the first time in five quarters when the tech investment giant reports earnings on Thursday, benefiting from strong gains in the value of its listed assets. The company has worked hard to shore up its financial position and investors will be looking for any clues as to what it might do with the ample capital it now has at its disposal to deploy, in particular whether it will embark on share buybacks. According to Reuters, Japanese government bond yields fell on Wednesday as investors absorbed the firm results seen at an auction for 30-year bonds that had generated caution in the market. The benchmark 10-year JGB yield was moving in a tight range, last down one basis point at 0.705%. According to Reuters, a driverless Waymo car collided with a cyclist in San Francisco on Tuesday but the bicyclist suffered only minor scratches and left the scene on their own, the company said by email. Waymo, Alphabet's autonomous driving unit, said it called the police to the scene and that it was also contacting relevant authorities about the incident. According to Reuters, TikTok owner ByteDance said on Wednesday that Zhang Nan has resigned as the CEO of Douyin Group, the popular short video platform's sister app in China. Zhang posted on her personal social media account on WeChat that she was resigning from the position, in a move confirmed by ByteDance. According to Bloomberg, recent economic figures and aggressive market bets on rapid interest rate cuts mean the European Central Bank should be patient before loosening borrowing costs, according to executive board member Isabel Schnabel. Citing sticky services inflation, a resilient labor market, a notable loosening of financial conditions and tensions in the Red Sea, this cautions against adjusting the policy stance soon, she said in a Financial Times interview. According to Reuters, China on Wednesday inaugurated its Ross Sea Scientific Research Station, the official Xinhua news agency reported, starting operations in an outpost in a part of the Antarctic due south of Australia and New Zealand for the first time. Resembling a crucifix, like the Crux constellation or the Southern Cross, the Kinling Station will be staffed year-round with quarters sufficient to house as many as 80 people in the summer months, official media has previously said. According to Reuters, a rethink on when the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates is reverberating through the fixed income market, heightening risk for those betting the explosive rally that took bonds higher at the end of 2023 will continue this year. Investors piled into treasuries late last year on expectations that the Fed will cut rates as soon as the first quarter of this year, sending government bond prices roaring back from 16-year lows. According to Reuters, shares of Mitsubishi Corp hit an all-time high on Wednesday a day after the Japanese trading house pledged to spend 500 billion yen to buy back shares. Mitsubishi, Japan's top trading house, on Tuesday said it would buy back up to 10% of its shares, which, together with an earlier buyback and an annual dividend, will bring total shareholder returns to 94% for the year ending in March. According to Bloomberg, New York Community Bancorp's credit grade was cut to junk by Moody's Investor Service less than a week after the regional lender said it was stockpiling reserves to cover souring loans tied to commercial real estate. The rating company downgraded New York Community Bancorp's long-term issuer rating by two levels to BA2, citing unanticipated losses in its New York office and multifamily properties, pressure on earnings and a decline in its capitalization. The bank's outlook remains under review, Moody's said in a report released Tuesday. According to Reuters, Diageo's attempt to reassure investors about its strategy in Latin America has boosted confidence among some that the world's top spirits maker can revive its performance after a profit warning, but doubts remain for others. Investors watched closely as the maker of Tanqueray Gin and Johnny Walker Whiskey reported its first half results last week after a November warning shook confidence in the company and its management led by new chief executive Deborah Crew. According to Bloomberg, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co.'s January sales rose after strong demand for AI chips helped offset continued weakness in consumer electronics products. Revenue at the world's biggest chip contract manufacturer and supplier to Apple Inc. and NVIDIA Corp. 
rose 7.9% last month to 215.79 billion new Taiwan dollars, according to a statement Wednesday. According to Reuters, Siemens Energy on Wednesday said there would be no change to the 1.6 billion euros it expects in costs to fix quality issues at its onshore wind turbine division. In presentation slides alongside final first quarter results, Siemens Energy also said that it expects to tailor its onshore wind turbine product portfolio over the course of 2024 to its more focused geographic market strategy. According to Reuters, Japan's biggest steelmaker Nippon Steel Corp on Wednesday reported a 14.7% drop in April to December net profit as a deterioration in inventory valuation gains outweighed improved margins and lower costs, but it raised its annual forecast. Nippon Steel, the world's number four steelmaker, posted a profit of 440.9 billion yen in the nine months through December 31, compared with 517.1 billion yen a year earlier. According to Bloomberg, Woodside Energy Group Limited ended talks with smaller rival Santos Limited over a potential combination that would have created a dominant liquefied natural gas supplier in Asia. Recent major oil and gas sector deals have involved low premiums and Woodside had flagged last month it would only pursue a transaction that delivered value for investors. According to Reuters, South Korea's LG Chem on Wednesday said it has signed a deal worth 24.7 trillion won to supply electric vehicle battery cathodes to General Motors from this year to 2035. The South Korean petrochemicals giant plans to supply more than 500,000 tons of materials to make cathodes, enough to power about 5 million EVs, LG Chem said in a statement. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank must be patient with cutting interest rates as inflation could flare up again and recent data confirm fears that the last mile of getting price growth down will be the hardest, ECB board member Isabel Schnabel told the Financial Times. The ECB has been holding interest rates at record highs since September but the debate over policy easing is intensifying and markets see the bank starting to reverse course this spring given weak growth and fading price pressures. According to Reuters, British technology group Onfido is in advanced talks to sell itself to US-based Entrust Corp, two people familiar with the matter told Reuters. Onfido, which uses artificial intelligence to verify customer identities, could be valued around $650 million in a deal, one of the people said. According to Bloomberg, oil was confined to a narrow range after a two-day gain as geopolitical risk in the Middle East was offset by a report showing stockpiles expanded in the US. Brent crude approached $79 a barrel after climbing 1.6% over the previous two sessions, while West Texas Intermediate was below $74. The Houthis said they targeted two ships in the Southern Red Sea, the latest in a string of attacks that has forced a major rerouting of global trade. The U.S. has vowed more strikes against Iranian forces and their proxies in the region. According to Reuters, German industrial production fell more than expected in December, the Federal Statistics Office said on Wednesday, marking the seventh monthly decline in a row. Industrial production fell in December by 1.6% compared with the previous month. Analysts polled by Reuters had predicted a 0.4% fall. According to Reuters, Pandora, the world's biggest jewelry maker, is aiming for organic revenue growth of 6% to 9% in 2024 it said on Wednesday, after strong sales of its silver charms and bracelets drove its share price to more than double since the start of last year. The company announced a share buyback program of up to 4 billion Danish crowns after confirming strong fourth-quarter revenue and earnings. According to Reuters, Total Energy said on Wednesday its net adjusted income fell to $5.2 billion in the fourth quarter of 2023, down 31% compared to the same period a year ago mainly due to lower oil prices and refining margins. The oil and gas group recorded an adjusted EBITDA of $11.7 billion, down 27% over the October to December period compared to the same time in 2022, and production of 2.483 million barrels per day, down 12% compared to fourth quarter 2022. According to Reuters, Thailand's central bank left its key interest rate unchanged for a second straight meeting on Wednesday as expected, resisting government pressure to reduce borrowing costs to help revive faltering growth. 
The Bank of Thailand's Monetary Policy Committee in a 5-2 vote decided to hold the one-day repurchase rate at 2.50%, the highest in more than a decade. It had raised the rate by 200 basis points since August 2022 to curb inflation. According to Bloomberg, Total Energy's SE raised its dividend and continued share buybacks, shrugging off a 31% drop in fourth-quarter earnings caused by weaker oil and gas prices and shrinking refining margins. The French energy giant's results, although slightly weaker than expected, mirror the trend of rising returns from big oil. The majors have become a cash cow for shareholders as earnings remain high by historical standards, even if profits are down from a year earlier in line with energy prices. According to Bloomberg, some Russian banks appear to have maneuvered around a ban on shipping dollars and euros to the country by trading gold in the United Arab Emirates and Turkey, according to research from a financial intelligence company. The sanctions on export of banknotes were introduced after the Kremlin's invasion of Ukraine. The report compiled by Sayari found that in the first quarter of 2023, the financial institutions, which include Lanta Bank JSC, whose owners control gold miner GV Gold, and at least one lender that is not sanctioned, imported more than the equivalent of $82 million in euros, dollars and UAE dirhams. According to Reuters, Danish brewer Carlsberg said on Wednesday it expects organic operating profit growth of 1% to 5% in 2024 and inflationary pressures to moderate. The world's third largest brewer and maker of brands such as Cronenberg 1664 reported a 4.7% rise in 2023 revenue to 73.59 billion Danish crowns, narrowly topping the 73.31 billion expected by analysts, LSEG data showed. According to Reuters, the world's biggest lockmaker Asa Abloy reported an 11% rise in fourth-quarter operating profit on Wednesday, below market expectations, with like-for-like -like sales growth grinding to a halt amid slow residential markets. The Swedish group's quarterly operating profit grew to 5.72 billion Swedish crowns from 5.15 billion a year earlier. Analysts polled by LSEG had expected a profit of 5.77 billion crowns for the quarter. According to Reuters, Microsoft will provide 2 million people in India with AI skilling opportunities by 2025, CEO Sadia Nadella said on Wednesday, adding that it is imperative for India and the United States to cooperate on AI norms and regulations. The skilling will focus on training individuals in Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities, as well as rural areas and unlock inclusive socio-economic progress, the company said in a statement. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble firmed back past 91 to the dollar on Wednesday after a late slide in the previous session, but was still trading close to its weakest since mid-January, sensitive to changes in demand for foreign currency. At 0734 GMT, the ruble was 0.3% stronger against the dollar at 90.97 and had gained 0.1% to trade at 97.95 versus the euro. It had firmed 0.2% against the yuan to 12.63. According to Reuters, the world's three biggest wind power groups on Wednesday gave a sober view of the year ahead, citing ongoing challenges in the maturing sector that continues to suffer from project delays, equipment issues and inflation. Siemens Energy, the world's largest maker of offshore wind turbines, expects a 2024 loss before special items of around €2 billion Euros at its troubled wind division Siemens Gamesa, where quality problems at some onshore models have caused a major crisis. According to Reuters, British investors put more money into equity funds than any month since April 2021, although most of it went to U.S. equity funds as they continued to pull cash from local stocks, data from fund network Callistone showed on Wednesday. UK flows into equity funds rose for three months in a row, hitting £2.01 billion in January, Callistone said, in a turnaround from October when UK investors pulled £1.2 billion out of equities overall. According to Bloomberg, German state-owned development bank KFW plans to raise as much as 2.2 billion euros by selling a stake in the country's former state mail monopoly Deutsche Post AG. The bank is looking to sell as many as 50 million shares, which equates to a 4% stake in the company, according to deal terms seen by Bloomberg News. The shares are being offered in the range of 43 euros and 45 cents to market price in an accelerated process, the terms showed.
According to Reuters, Europe's largest paper packaging producer Smurfit Kappa said on Wednesday that its volumes increased in the fourth quarter, snapping three successive quarterly declines that led to a 12% drop in full-year core profit, as expected. Earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization of 2.08 billion euros were broadly in line with the approximate 2.05 billion the group forecast in November. That was still its second largest profit ever and sharply higher than 1.7 billion euro recorded in 2021. According to Reuters, French e-commerce startup Miracle on Tuesday reported a 50% jump in gross merchandise value to $8.6 billion for 2023 and its flagship platform recorded its first profit in the fourth quarter. The company, which last raised $555 million in 2021 at a valuation of more than $3.5 billion, has been organizing itself to be ready for a potential initial public offering. According to Reuters, Australia will introduce laws giving workers the right to ignore unreasonable calls and messages from their bosses outside of work hours without penalty, with potential fines for employers that breach the rule. The right to disconnect is part of a raft of changes to industrial relations laws proposed by the federal government under a parliamentary bill, which it says would protect workers' rights and help restore work-life balance. According to Reuters, a blast took place near an election candidate's office in Pakistan's southwestern province of Balochistan, a local official said on Wednesday, killing 12 people and raising concerns over security in the lead-up to Thursday's election. Pakistan goes to the polls amid rising militant attacks in recent months and the jailing of Imran Khan, the winner of the last national election, who has been dominating the headlines despite an economic crisis and other woes threatening the nuclear-armed country. According to Reuters, Shanghai plans to accelerate approvals for foreign firms wanting to send their local data offshore, four sources with knowledge of the matter said, in what would be a major relaxation of China's stringent data rules unveiled more than a year ago. The Shanghai government in recent weeks discussed the so-called fast-track approval initiative with representatives of some foreign firms operating in the commercial hub, including Western banks and asset managers, said two of the sources. According to Yahoo Finance, Disney's ESPN will team up with Warner Brothers Discovery and Fox to launch a new sports streaming service, set to debut sometime this fall. According to the companies, the platform will bring together their respective slate of sports networks along with certain direct-to-consumer sports services and sports rights. This will include content from all the major professional sports leagues and college sports. According to Reuters, 12 people are trapped on a roller coaster in Hong Kong's Disneyland after the ride stopped working on Wednesday afternoon, with rescue operations continuing, police and fire services said as they deployed dozens of personnel to the site. Police and fire services were called for assistance from 3.16 p.m. after the Disney ride Hyperspace Mountain stopped working. No injuries have been reported and there is no smoke or fire at the scene, a police spokeswoman said. According to Bloomberg, the head of Douyin, TikTok's sister app in China, is stepping down from her role to take up other duties within parent company ByteDance Limited. Kelly Zhang is relinquishing the post of Douyin Group Chief Executive Officer a ByteDance spokesperson confirmed on Wednesday, after an earlier report in Chinese media. ByteDance will not seek to appoint a successor and Zhang will shift her focus to the video editing app CapCut, according to a person familiar with the matter, who declined to be named as the plans are private. According to Bloomberg, European equities were little changed as investors processed a steady stream of earnings and messaging from central bank officials keen to temper hopes of early interest rate cuts. The stock's 600 index was 0.1% higher by 8.04 a.m. in London, with the food and beverage and auto sectors leading gains. Real estate stocks were the biggest laggards. According to Reuters, the chief executive of packaging giant Smurfit Kappa said on Wednesday that the worst of a year-long dip in demand for the sector appeared over after volumes increased in the fourth quarter, snapping three successive quarterly declines. According to Reuters, after a strong El Nino, global weather is poised to transition to La Nina in the second half of 2024, a pattern typically bringing higher precipitation to Australia, Southeast Asia and India and drier weather to grain and oilseed producing regions of the Americas, meteorologists and agricultural analysts said. While it is too early predict its intensity or impact on crops, meteorologists said, 
a shift towards a mild occurrence of La Nina, when surface ocean waters cool off the tropical west coast of South America, is looming. According to Reuters, total energies has not sent ships through the southern strait leading to the Red Sea and the Suez Canal for several weeks, extending its ship's travel time to Europe, the French oil major said on Wednesday. The Bab el Mandeb Strait at the southern end of the Red Sea has been disrupted by Houthi attacks on commercial vessels, driving up freight costs and restricting traffic. According to Reuters, global shares hit their highest in over a year on Wednesday, supported by relatively robust earnings and a retreat in the dollar, although trouble among U.S. regional banks and skepticism over China's efforts to support its markets made for cautious trading. Bonds gained some respite after an aggressive sell-off that spilled into the early part of this week, following comments from Federal Reserve officials that did little to shift expectations for the outlook for monetary policy. According to Reuters, Swiss Foreign Minister Ignacio Cassis said on Wednesday he hoped China would give us a hand in Ukraine peace talks, after Switzerland last month agreed to host a global peace summit on Ukraine. Ukraine said it had invited Chinese President Xi Jinping to participate in a planned peace summit of world leaders in Switzerland to seek ways to end the war that began when Russia sent troops into Ukraine on February 24, 2022. According to Reuters, Swedish prosecutors said on Wednesday they would drop further investigation into explosions on the Nord Stream 1 and 2 gas pipelines, confirming earlier media reports. The conclusion of the investigation is that Sweden does not have jurisdiction and that the investigation should therefore be closed, the Swedish prosecution authority said in a statement. According to Yahoo Finance, despite uncertainty about when the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates, and Wall Street concerns over the Fed holding interest rates at a 23-year high weighing on stocks, earnings have come in above, on average, Wall Street's expectations. Through about two-thirds of the SP 500's fourth quarter 2023 reports, companies are posting an average six percentage point earnings per share beat this quarter, per Bank of America. That's about double the average three percentage point beat normally seen by SP 500 companies. According to Reuters, China's new energy vehicle sales fell 38.8% versus the previous month, the first such drop since August 2023, industry data showed as demand faltered in the world's largest auto market despite a renewed discounting push led by Tesla. Vehicle sales, including those exported, totaled 2.44 million units, up 47.9% from a year earlier and down 22.7% from December, according to data from the China Association of Automobile Manufacturers. According to Yahoo Finance, Jerome Powell is pledging to keep politics off the Federal Reserve's docket in 2024. History suggests it's never quite that straightforward. The Federal Reserve Chair, like it or not, appears increasingly likely to be overseeing a controversial rate-cutting campaign later this year just as the election season nears its climax. According to Reuters, Russia said on Wednesday that two of its 295MC strategic bombers flew over waters near the U.S. state of Alaska but said they stayed in international airspace. The 295s, known as bears by NATO, flew for about nine hours, escorted by Su-30SM fighter jets. They flew over the Bering and Chukchi Seas, Russia's defense ministry said. According to Bloomberg, losses in the commercial property market, which have already sent some banks in New York and Japan into a tailspin, moved to Europe's biggest economy this week. Bonds issued by real estate-focused German lenders slumped after Morgan Stanley analysts recommended clients sell senior bonds issued by Deutsche Fabriefbank AG, a state-owned lender, because of its exposure to the CRE market in the U.S., according to people with knowledge of the matter who spoke on condition of anonymity. According to Bloomberg, China replaced the head of its securities regulator in a surprise move amid a sharp sell-off in the nation's stock markets. Wu Qing, a banking veteran, was named as head of the China Securities Regulatory Commission, replacing Yi Huiman, according to Xinhua News Service. According to Reuters, South Korea's Hyundai Motor Company said on Wednesday that it has not decided yet on listing its Indian unit and it will comment on the matter when the plan becomes finalized or within a month. As a global company, we constantly review various measures, including listing overseas subsidiaries, to increase corporate value, but nothing has been decided. Hyundai Motor said in a regulatory filing. 
According to Reuters, Eurozone bond yields dipped a touch on Wednesday after data showing German industrial production fell more than expected in December, but borrowing costs on both sides of the Atlantic largely continued to stabilize after their recent sharp moves. Germany's 10-year yield, the benchmark for the Eurozone, dropped around two basis points to 2.28%. According to Bloomberg, UBS Group AG is offering dollar-denominated additional Tier 1 notes just a day after setting out plans to sell billions more of the risky securities in the coming years. The Swiss lender is offering $1 billion of securities callable in April 2031 at an initial yield of about 8.375%, according to a person with knowledge of the sale who asked not to be identified because the information is private. It follows UBS's return to the market in November when it pulled in $36 billion of orders for $3.5 billion of AT1s across two tranches, a deal that marked a recovery of the market in a tumultuous year. According to Reuters, Sweden's central bank could cut rates as early as the first half of this year, but there are risks that inflation might prove stubborn, delaying policy easing, the minutes of the central bank's most recent meeting, published on Wednesday, showed. The Riksbank kept its key interest rate unchanged at 4.00% on February 1, but said it could start loosening policy much earlier than its previous forecast. According to Bloomberg, U.S. lawmakers accused top advisors to the Public Investment Fund of not cooperating in an inquiry into the planned merger of the PGA Tour with Saudi Arabia-backed Live Golf. Firms including McKinsey Company and Boston Consulting Group have only provided a fraction of the documents demanded in a congressional subpoena, senators said. Executives at the firms said they've been unable to cooperate because the PIF sued its own advisors to prevent them from handing over evidence. According to Reuters, German auto supplier Bosch warned of possible personnel cuts in its mobility sector and pushed back its target margin of 7% by one to two years on Wednesday as it forecast a gloomy economic environment for 2024. The company reported an 8% increase in exchange rate adjusted sales to 91.6 billion euros in 2023, according to preliminary figures, with an earnings margin before interest and taxes from operations of 5%. According to Bloomberg, De Beers expects any recovery in the beleaguered diamond market to be slow and gradual as the industry continues to suffer from weak economic growth in key markets such as China and the U.S. The sector almost came to a complete standstill in the second half of last year as De Beers and Alrosa PJSC, the two biggest miners, all but stopped supplies in a desperate attempt to stem a slump in prices. While those efforts helped the market to pick up a bit, it's unclear how much appetite trade buyers currently have. According to Reuters, European shares were flat on Wednesday as the effect of easing government bond yields and gains in companies with upbeat earnings reports were offset by a slide in healthcare and energy stocks. The pan-European stocks 600 index was unchanged at 486.66 points as of 0947 GMT. According to Reuters, Microsoft is in talks with CISPE in an attempt to resolve its European Union antitrust complaint about the U.S. software giant's cloud computing licensing practices, the trade group said on Wednesday. Working the issue out bilaterally could help Microsoft stave off a possible lengthy EU investigation that could lead to a possible fine in an order to change its business practices. According to Bloomberg, Amundi Saw has acquired Swiss asset manager Alpha Associates AG in a €350 million Euros deal as part of its strategy to expand in the rapidly growing private market sector. The French company will pay €160 million Euros up front and as much as €190 million Euros in milestone payments tied to the Zurich-based firm's growth over the next five years, Chief Executive Officer Valerie Bodson and Deputy CEO Nicholas Kalkoen said on a call with reporters. According to Bloomberg, Texas grid officials received repeated warnings last summer that their efforts to shore up the state's increasingly strained electric grid risk driving up power prices, records show. Concerns first arose just days after the state launched a new policy meant to keep more backup electricity supply in reserve in case of emergencies, known as the ERCOT Contingency Reserve Service, or ECRS. Complaints about ECRS soon reached Governor Greg Abbott's office. Yo! You getting hit on ECRS stuff? An employee for the grid manager texted a member of Abbott's staff, according to documents obtained via open records requests. Oh for sure, the Abbott staffer responded.
According to Bloomberg, Barrett Developments PLC has agreed to buy rival Redrow PLC in one of the UK's biggest ever homebuilder acquisitions. The deal, which values Redrow at more than £2.5 billion, comes after a turbulent year for the nation's developers driven by higher interest rates and weak demand. The all-share offer is subject to shareholder approval and will be arranged via a court-sanctioned scheme of arrangement, according to a statement Wednesday. According to Reuters, New York Community Bancorp shares fell 9.5% before the bell on Wednesday, bracing for another challenging trading session after analysts expressed caution about governance risks at the bank. Investors have fled the stock since the lender last week reported a surprise quarterly loss and recorded huge provisions for potential bad loans tied to the commercial real estate segment, sending shockwaves through the industry. According to Bloomberg, TikTok Inc. executives visited Israel and met with its president to address accusations that the social media giant was failing to clamp down on anti-Semitic and pro-Hamas content on its platform. Israel's president Isaac Herzog presented TikTok's public policy heads for the Americas and Europe with research indicating the platform was slow to respond, according to a statement from the president's residence on Tuesday. According to Reuters, Snap tumbled 31% on Wednesday after fourth-quarter revenue missed Wall Street expectations, with the company struggling to compete for advertising dollars against heavyweights such as Meta and Alphabet. The Snapchat owner's results are in contrast to strong advertising sales that rivals reported, a sign that advertisers are gravitating towards larger, stable companies amid an uncertain economy. According to Bloomberg, Snap Inc. plunged more than 30% in late trading after posting disappointing revenue in the holiday quarter, a sign the owner of the Snapchat app is still reeling from a slump in its digital advertising business. Fourth quarter revenue increased 5% to $1.36 billion, missing analysts' average projection of $1.38 billion. For the full year, sales growth was flat, reflecting a challenging operating environment, according to a letter to shareholders. According to Reuters, China has. According to Bloomberg, Bohai Leasing Company, a Shenzhen-listed arm of failed Chinese conglomerate HNA Group, is kicking off the sale of container leasing business Seco, according to people familiar with the matter. The company is working with an advisor to solicit bids for Seco, for which it hopes to fetch a valuation of more than $5 billion including debt, said the people, who asked not to be identified because they weren't authorized to speak publicly. Infrastructure funds may show interest in the asset, the people said. According to Bloomberg, Turkish central bankers long played to an audience of one. When it came to Hafize Gay Erkin, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's trust hardly wavered until the very end. But by then, what proved her undoing was that she'd lost the confidence of other heavyweights like Finance Minister Mehmet Simsek who were on a mission to give the nearly $1.1 trillion economy a facelift. According to Reuters, the proposed sale of LNG developer Tellurian's natural gas production assets represents a move to stay afloat amid dwindling survival options, said two people familiar with the company's thinking. Tellurian has spent years and hundreds of millions of dollars trying to finance and build the 27.6 million metric ton per annum driftwood plant in Lake Charles, Louisiana. On Tuesday, it put on the market a natural gas production unit that it once dangled as an incentive for investors to invest in the plant. According to Reuters, Brazil's state-run Petrobras is in talks with other national oil companies in China, India and the Middle East, including Kuwait Petroleum and Qatar Energy, to collaborate on energy projects, its chief executive said on Wednesday. The company is also keen to work with neighboring Venezuela, Jean-Paul Prates told Reuters on the sidelines of the India Energy Week event in the state of Goa. According to Reuters, Tellurian expects equity financing processes and discussions with financial partners to progress rapidly to fund the Driftwood LNG plant in Louisiana, the company's CEO Octavio Simos said on Wednesday. We have a project that has all the permits and is in construction. So we progress on securing off-take contracts and on securing partners, Simos told reporters on the sidelines of industry event India Energy Week in Goa. According to Reuters, Bunge beat Wall Street estimates for fourth quarter profit on Wednesday, as the grain trader and processor benefited from strong global export demand. The company posted an adjusted profit of $3.70 per share for the three months ended December 31, 
compared with analysts' average estimate of $2.81, according to LSEG data. According to Reuters, Carlyle Group said on Wednesday its fourth quarter distributable earnings fell 7% year on year, as it sold fewer assets from its private equity portfolio. Distributable earnings, which represents the cash used to pay dividends to shareholders, dropped to $402.7 million from $433 million a year earlier. According to Reuters, IMAB said on Wednesday that it has agreed to divest its operations and assets in China, as part of its strategy to become a U.S.-focused biotech firm. Shares of the company rose nearly 7% in pre-market trading. According to Reuters, a Zambian businessman on Wednesday lost a London lawsuit against Atlas Mara, the African investment vehicle set up by former Barclays boss Bob Diamond, over the acquisition of a Zambian bank. Rajan Matani sued Atlas Mara over the sale of Finance Bank Zambia, alleging he received less than a quarter of the $215 million said to have been offered in 2015. According to Reuters, Ford Motor shares surged 6% in pre-market trading on Wednesday after the automaker increased its dividend for the first quarter and decided to scale back investments in new capacity for loss-making electric vehicles. On Tuesday, the automaker disclosed its plans to return an extra 18 cents per share in dividend on top of the regular 15 cents to investors, joining rival General Motors in returning cash to investors. GM shares were also up 1.8%. According to Reuters, sterling rose on Wednesday after data showing rising house prices in Britain supported bets that the Bank of England was not likely to cut interest rates anytime soon. British house prices rose 2.5% in the year to January, the strongest annual growth rate for a year, according to data from mortgage lender Halifax that added to tentative signs of recovering momentum. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures were muted on Wednesday though shares of Ford and Snap saw significant moves following their quarterly results, while investors were on the lookout for clues from policymakers on the outlook for interest rate cuts. Ford Motor jumped 6.2% in pre-market trading after the auto giant said it will return more cash to shareholders via dividend, dimming the gloom of a quarterly loss. Peer General Motors also added 1.8%. According to Reuters, CVS Health lowered its adjusted profit forecast for 2024 on Wednesday after an increase in medical care among older adults in the United States drove up fourth-quarter costs at its insurance business. The company cited a late-year rise in medical care, including outpatient procedures among those enrolled in Medicare Advantage plans, under which insurers are paid a set rate to manage health care for people 65 and older, are those with disabilities. According to Reuters, Uber Technologies forecast quarterly core profit and gross bookings above estimates and reported market-beating results for the holiday quarter on Wednesday, fueled by higher demand in its ride-sharing and food delivery segments. The company, which posted its first full-year profit on net basis, is expanding initiatives like memberships, corporate travel and advertising. Coupled with a pickup in travel, this is helping the company improve user retention. According to Reuters, New York Times missed expectations for quarterly revenue on Wednesday, hurt by a slowdown in advertising sales and fewer customers signing up for its bundles. An uncertain economy has led to advertisers reducing their marketing budgets and sticking with safe havens such as Meta, while readers also cut back on subscriptions as they try to keep a lid on costs. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin miners are getting a jump on an anticipated decline in revenue from the so-called halving in April, when the blockchain's network protocol will reduce rewards for verifying transactions by half. Miner Reserves Unsold Bitcoin held in digital wallets associated with the companies, have dropped by 8,400 tokens since the start of 2024 to 1.8 million, a level last seen in June 2021, according to data compiled by CryptoQuant. Analysts said the decrease indicates miners are selling tokens. According to Bloomberg, Alibaba Group Holding Limited unveiled a $25 billion addition to its stock repurchase program as it reported disappointing revenue reflecting how rivals such as PDD Holdings Inc. are eroding its dominance in China. The Hangzhou Base Group, which intends to carve out its major business lines into independent units, posted a 5% rise in December quarter sales to 260.3 billion yuan, versus the average analyst's estimate of about 261 billion yuan.
Net income in the period fell sharply to 14.4 billion yuan. According to Reuters, India plans to protest the European Union's proposed carbon tax on imports of steel, iron ore and cement at the next meeting of World Trade Organization later this month, saying it would emerge as a new trade barrier, two government sources said. New Delhi, along with South Africa and other like-minded countries, is planning to push its demand to reign in the European Union's unilateral measure at the WTO's ministerial conference, to be held in Abu Dhabi from February 26 to 29, senior government officials said. According to Reuters, German union IG Metall and Ford have agreed to slash the number of jobs at a plant in Sarlouis by about 3,500 after production of the Ford Focus stops there next year, the union said on Wednesday. In a blow to Germany's economy and prestige as a carmaking hub, the plant's future was thrown into doubt in June 2022 when Ford decided to assemble its next-generation electric vehicle in Spain, not Sarlouis, which has some 4,500 employees. According to Bloomberg, India, the world's top rice shipper, may extend an export tax on the parboiled variety as part of efforts to ease food inflation ahead of national elections, a move that could keep world supply tight and send prices to new peaks. The government of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who will seek a third term in the polls due in the first half of this year, is considering keeping the export levy at 20 percent, according to people familiar with the matter. There is no immediate proposal to ban exports of parboiled rice, said the people, who ask not to be identified as the talks are confidential. The tax is currently due to expire March 31st. According to Bloomberg, the troubles in the U.S. commercial property market, which have already hit banks in New York and Japan, moved to Europe this week, elevating fears about broader contagion. The latest victim was Germany's Deutsche Fabriefbank AG, which saw its bonds slump on concern about its exposure to the sector. It responded by issuing an unscheduled statement Wednesday that it had increased provisions because of the persistent weakness of the real estate markets. According to Reuters, the head of Norway's $1.6 trillion sovereign wealth fund, one of the world's largest investors, said on Wednesday he was concerned about growing signs of a backlash against the drive to bring diversity at the top of U.S. organizations. The fund is part of a growing number of investors and policymakers pushing to put more women in company boardrooms. It invests in over 8,800 companies worldwide, holding on average 1.5% of all the world's listed companies. According to Yahoo Finance, New York Community Bancorp is attempting to reassure investors about its deposits, liquidity and governance following a week-long plunge in the company's stock and a decision by Moody's to cut the bank's credit rating to junk. The $116 billion commercial real estate lender put out a press release Tuesday night following the Moody's downgrade showing that total deposits were up since the end of 2023 and that its total liquidity of $37.3 billion exceeded its level of uninsured deposits. According to Reuters, industrial conglomerate Emerson Electric forecast a full-year profit ahead of analysts' estimates on Tuesday, helped by sustained demand for automation sending its shares up 2.2% in pre-market trade. The company expects its full-year adjusted profit to be in the range of $5.30 to $5.45, above analysts' estimates of $5.26, according to LSEG data. According to Reuters, gaming platform Roblox forecast annual bookings above estimates on Wednesday after it crossed $1 billion in quarterly bookings for the first time on higher in-game spending during the holiday season sending its shares up 15% before the bell. In a positive sign for the gaming industry, the global video game market is anticipated to grow 2.8% this year, as it expects robust sales of Microsoft's Xbox and Sony's PlayStation 5 consoles, according to research firm Nuzu. According to Reuters, futures for Canada's resources heavy main stock index drifted lower on Wednesday, tracking a decline in gold prices, while investors awaited minutes of the Bank of Canada's policy meeting for cues on the central bank's interest rate path. March futures on the SPTSX index were down 0.3% at 7.28 a.m. Eastern Time while their U.S. peers traded flat. According to Reuters, the U.S. government on Wednesday strengthened air quality standards for soot for the first time in over a decade, predicting $46 billion in health benefits while industry groups warned the move would harm some local economies. 
the Environmental Protection Agency lowered the allowable concentration of particulate matter smaller than 2.5 microns, or PM2.5, to 9 micrograms per cubic meter on average per year, from the current 12 micrograms per cubic meter in place since 2012. In its proposal last year, it also considered a lower and higher limit. According to Reuters, Uttarakhand, a small northern Indian state governed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Hindu Nationalist Party, is set to pass a bill to replace religion-specific civil laws with a uniform civil code, which could be used as a template by other states. The bill, being debated by Uttarakhand's legislature on Wednesday, is expected to sail through as Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party commands a majority in the state. According to Reuters, South Africa's African National Congress Party has a 75% chance of losing its majority in this year's national elections, slated to be the most closely contested in the country's democratic history, Standard Bank's chief economist said on Wednesday. The ANC has a 65% probability of getting between 45% and 50% of the vote and a 10% chance of falling below that, Gulam Dalim told a press briefing at which he set out the bank's early election forecasts. He did not explain its methodology. According to Reuters, big oil firms are handing shareholders more money than ever and are promising more going forward in an attempt to reassure investors of their discipline and resilience in the face of an uncertain outlook for fossil fuels. The top five Western oil and gas firms, BP, Chevron, ExxonMobil, Shell and Total Energies, returned to shareholders over $111 billion in dividends and share repurchases in 2023, according to Reuters' calculation. According to Reuters, Canada posted a surprise trade deficit of C-312 million dollars in December, as exports were dragged lower by cars, trucks and crude oil while imports edged up due to a record rise consumer goods, Statistics Canada data show on Wednesday. Analysts in a Reuters poll had forecast a C$1.1 billion surplus. November's surplus was downwardly revised to C$1.06 billion from C$1.57 billion reported initially. According to Reuters, Lawmakers in a small Indian state ruled by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party on Wednesday approved landmark legislation to unify personal laws across religions, a move opposed by many minority Muslims. Approval by the Himalayan state of Uttarakhand makes it the first in the country after independence from Britain to implement a uniform civil code, a contentious decades-old BJP promise, months before national elections. According to Reuters, War underwriters have raised the premiums they charge to U.S., British and Israeli firms by as high as 50% for ships transiting the Red Sea and some providers are avoiding such business due to targeting of the vessels by Yemen's Houthis, sources said. Attacks by the Iran-aligned Houthis since November have slowed trade between Asia and Europe and alarmed major powers. The Houthis say they are acting in solidarity with Palestinians as Israel's war against Hamas militants in Gaza grinds on. According to Reuters, U.S. energy firm California Resources will buy ERA Energy in an all-stock transaction valued at $2.1 billion, the company said on Wednesday. Under the terms of the deal, California Resources will issue 21.2 million common shares to the equity owners of ERA. According to Reuters, Direxion, a U.S. asset manager specializing in leveraged exchange-traded funds, on Wednesday rolled out a new product allowing investors to bet on gains in the MSCI Emerging Markets X China Index. As China's stock market has struggled to emerge from a years-long slump, investor appetite for emerging markets funds that exclude exposure to the world's second-largest economy has surged. According to data from LSCG Lipper, China-focused funds domiciled outside of that country saw outflows of $1.54 billion in 2023 alone and an 18.8% drop in assets under management. According to Reuters, Bangladesh said on Wednesday it will not allow any more Rohingya refugees from Myanmar to enter the country because supporting the huge numbers already there threatens its own security. Muslim Rohingya have faced persecution in Buddhist-majority Myanmar for decades and nearly a million of them live in crammed, bamboo and plastic camps in Bangladesh's border district of Cox's Bazar most fled a military crackdown in 2017. According to Reuters, 
UN nuclear watchdog chief Rafael Grossi visited the Russian-occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine on Wednesday and said there were enough wells on site to supply cooling pools, Russian news agencies reported. The International Atomic Energy Agency also rotated its team of observers who are permanently stationed at Zaporizhia, the agencies reported. According to Reuters, payments from crypto-related ransom attacks nearly doubled to a record $1 billion in 2023, blockchain analytics firm Chainalysis said on Wednesday. Scammers targeting institutions such as hospitals, schools and government offices for ransom pocketed $1.1 billion last year compared with $567 million in 2022. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. trade deficit narrowed last year by the most since 2009 as the value of imported goods declined and the services surplus increased. The annual trade shortfall shrank nearly 19% to $773.4 billion from a record in 2022, Commerce Department data showed Wednesday. In December, the deficit in goods and services trade widened slightly from the prior month to $62.2 billion. The figures aren't adjusted for inflation. According to Bloomberg, Alimentation Kush Tard Inc., which recently completed the purchase of almost 2,200 gasoline stations in Europe from Total Energies SE, is getting over 10 billion euros in orders for its first bond deal in the common currency in almost eight years to refinance acquisition debt. Bond arrangers for the owner of the Circle K convenience store chain garnered over 5.1 billion euros in bids for a planned sale of seven-year notes, according to people familiar with the matter, who asked not to be identified because they're not authorized to speak publicly about the matter. The company, based in Laval, Quebec, is also getting another 5.1 billion euros in orders for a planned 12-year bond, said the people. According to Reuters, Tesla managers have been asked whether each of their employees' positions were critical, stoking layoff fears in the company, Bloomberg News reported on Wednesday. Tesla sent out a single-line query for each job after cancelling some employees' biannual performance reviews, some of the people familiar with the matter told Bloomberg. According to Bloomberg, DoorDash Inc., already the top restaurant delivery company in the U.S., is now looking to strengthen its presence abroad. The San Francisco-based company operates in 28 countries outside the U.S., mostly in continental Europe, Japan and Australia. Yet it doesn't dominate any of those markets the way it does in the U.S., Chief Executive Officer Tony Hsu said in an interview. According to Bloomberg, Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis President Neil Kashkari said officials would like to see a few more months of inflation data before cutting interest rates adding that he thinks two to three cuts will likely be appropriate for 2024. We're not looking for better inflation data, we're just looking for additional inflation data that is also at around this 2% level, Kashgari said Wednesday on CNBC. If we get to see a few more months of that data, I think that will give us a lot of confidence. According to Reuters, Apple is building prototypes of at least two iPhones that fold widthwise like a clamshell. The information reported on Wednesday, citing a person with direct knowledge of the situation. The foldable iPhones are in early development and are not on the company's mass production plans for 2024 or 2025, according to the report. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields edged higher on Wednesday before the U.S. Treasury Department sells $42 billion in 10-year notes, with investors also focused on any fresh clues on when the Federal Reserve is likely to begin cutting interest rates. Treasuries have largely consolidated since a rapid two-day increase in yields on Friday and Monday on expectations that the Fed will hold rates higher for longer than previously expected. According to Bloomberg, New York Community Bancorp sought to reassure investors that its financial position is strong after shares touched a 27-year low on Tuesday. Deposits have increased since the end of last year and liquidity remains ample, the company said in a statement late Tuesday. The stock slipped 1% at 9.32 a.m. in New York, after swinging between losses and gains overnight following the statement and a Moody's credit rating downgrade. The shares have fallen about 60% since last week, when NYCB announced plans to slash its dividend and stockpile reserves for troubled loans tied to commercial real estate. According to Bloomberg, Ford Motor Company, buffeted by electric vehicle losses and rising labor costs, posted fourth-quarter results that soundly beat expectations and forecast higher profits in 2024. 
The automaker Tuesday announced adjusted earnings per share of $0.29, cents, more than double the $0.13 cents analysts expected on average. Fourth quarter revenue of $46 billion surpassed the $40.3 billion analysts expected. According to Bloomberg, Donald Trump is targeting the European Union for a potential slew of punitive trade measures designed to address long-standing grievances should he retake office, according to people familiar with his team's nascent economic platform discussions. The two sides are still at odds over tariff increases Trump imposed in his first term as president on steel and aluminum, which were partly suspended in 2021 after President Joe Biden took office. If Trump wins in November, the EU undoubtedly will be one of his chief targets on trade, according to conversations with several Trump advisors. According to Reuters, the U.S. Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Unit on Wednesday proposed a plan that will require real estate professionals to flag suspicious activity, in a bid to curb illicit funds flowing through residential real estate. The plan, proposed by the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, would require reporting from real estate professionals involved in cash transactions for residential real estate. Anti-corruption advocates have long pushed for regulators to close a loophole seen as allowing illicit funds to flow through cash home purchases. According to Reuters, Swiss Re is among a growing list of reinsurers to drop its demand that a near $10 billion battle with aircraft leasing companies, seeking payouts for more than 200 jets stuck in Russia, should be heard in Moscow, court filings show. Swiss Re's decision to accept the jurisdiction of English courts follows a similar decision by Pierre Chubb late last year as a battle against lessers, including Ireland's Aircap, US-listed Carlisle Aviation Partners in New York and Dublin-based Merck's Aviation, heats up. According to Reuters, German home prices could fall as much as 30% below their 2022 peak, one of the country's largest landlords told Reuters, in a more pessimistic assessment than rivals highlighting the continued threat posed to Europe's biggest economy. Tag Immobile & co-CEO Martin Thiel painted a bleak picture for Europe's biggest residential property market, which has already seen prices tumble by around 10% in Germany's worst property crash in a generation. According to Reuters, the inflation-adjusted wealth of white households in the U.S. grew faster than that of black and Hispanic households from the start of 2019 through the third quarter of last year, with black households in particular now worse off than they were four years ago, a New York Fed study has concluded. The study used information gathered by the U.S. Federal Reserve on the value of household assets including stocks and real estate, as well as liabilities owed on mortgages and other loans, and adjusted those values for inflation. According to Reuters, disagreement within Germany's awkward three-way coalition may pose problems for EU plans to cut truck emissions after the pro-business Free Democrats raised unexpected objections, government representatives said on Wednesday. The German government could not agree a common position on the EU proposals, government representatives told Reuters. According to Yahoo Finance, big tech's earnings season is in full swing. And though AI chip giant NVIDIA won't report its results until February 21st, there are plenty of insights to glean already. Chief among them is that AI continues to push a huge portion of the conversation for corporate earnings and that fundamental business practices are still important. So far, Alphabet, Amazon, AMD, Apple, Intel, Meta, and Microsoft have largely posted solid reports, but not every company is seeing positive stock moves. According to Reuters, U.S. auto safety regulators said on Wednesday they have closed an investigation into engine fire risks in 3 million Hyundai Motor and Kia vehicles. According to Reuters, the joint sports streaming platform of Fox Corp., Walt Disney's ESPN and Warner Brothers Discovery is expected to be priced at above $40 per month, CNBC reported on Wednesday, citing sources. The media companies had said on Tuesday that they would launch a sports streaming service later this autumn to capture younger viewers who are not tuned in to television. According to Reuters, a production cap in recent incidents with Boeing's 737 MAX aircraft will, undoubtedly, impede the plane-maker's ability to catch up on already delayed delivery commitments, Lesser Dubai Aerospace Enterprise Capital said on Wednesday. The Federal Aviation Administration has ordered Boeing to cap 737 production at the current rate of 38 jets a month for an undefined period while it addresses quality lapses, deferring the increases needed to meet rising demand for new jets. According to Reuters, 
Gilead Sciences said the U.S. Food and Drug Administration had put trials of its blood cancer drug on hold after it was tied to an increase in risk of death in a late-stage study. The FDA had put a hold on studies testing the drug, magrolimab, in patients with two different blood cancers called myelodysplastic syndromes and myeloid leukemia. According to Reuters, an early end or a slowdown in the pace of the Federal Reserve's ongoing balance sheet reduction would cut the supply of U.S. government debt, a move expected by some large banks to boost or widen swap spreads, which typically reflect supply and demand risks tied to treasuries. A swap spread is expressed as the basis point difference between the fixed rate of an interest rate swap tied to the secured overnight financing rate and the treasury yield of the same maturity. According to Reuters, U.S. Federal Reserve Governor Adriana Kugler said on Wednesday she is optimistic, inflation will continue to decline, but added policymakers need more assurance that is the case before lowering the benchmark interest rate. I will remain focused on the inflation side of our dual mandate until I am confident that inflation is returning durably to our 2% target, Kugler said in her first policy speech since joining the Fed's Washington-based board in September. According to Reuters, the German government is preparing for a possible nationalization of Rosneft's German activities, including its stake in the Schwett refinery, two government sources said on Wednesday. The economy ministry is making the preparations and Russia's Rosneft group was formally involved in a hearing on the matter on Monday, a report by Business Daily Handelsblatt said, adding no decision had been made on whether to go through with the move. According to Reuters, Cummins India reported a 20.6% rise in third-quarter profit on Wednesday, as demand for its engines and power generator sets recovered following a hit from new emissions norms. The Indian unit of U.S. truck engine maker Cummins posted a consolidated profit after tax of 4.99 billion rupees for the quarter ended December 31 from 4.14 billion rupees a year earlier. According to Reuters, Canada's main stock index was little changed on Wednesday as a weakness in commodity-linked stocks offset gains in technology stocks, as markets awaited minutes from the Bank of Canada's last policy meeting for cues on its interest rate path. At 10.36 a.m. Eastern Time, the Toronto Stock Exchange's SP-TSX Composite Index was up 7.19 points, or 0.03%, at 20,964.93. According to Reuters, the National Transportation Safety Board said Wednesday it will hold a June 25 meeting to determine the probable cause of a February 2023 Norfolk Southern train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, that prompted calls for rail safety reform. The derailment forced residents to abandon their homes after the train caught fire and released over a million gallons of hazardous materials and pollutants near the state's border with Pennsylvania. Last week the White House said President Joe Biden would soon visit East Palestine. According to Reuters, a court in Germany has issued an injunction against the sale of some of Intel's chips, in a patent dispute between the U.S. tech giant and the U.S. rival company that filed the complaint. The regional court in Dusseldorf ruled in favor of the California-based R2 semiconductor in a case involving voltage regulators, a court spokesperson said, confirming an earlier report in the Financial Times. According to Reuters, Sweden on Wednesday dropped its investigation into the explosions in 2022 on Nord Stream pipelines carrying Russian gas to Germany, saying it lacked jurisdiction in the case but had handed evidence it had uncovered over to German investigators. The multi-billion dollar Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines transporting gas under the Baltic Sea were ruptured by a series of blasts in the Swedish and Danish economic zones in September 2022, releasing vast amounts of methane into the air. According to Reuters, two of Siemens's largest investors have called for the German engineering group to simplify its operations by cutting its investments at Siemens Energy and Siemens Healthineers. Union Investment, a German fund manager with just under 1% stake in Siemens, and DECA Investment, an asset manager for Germany's unlisted banks, say Siemens's complexity weighs on its share price. According to Reuters, French digital payments company Worldline said on Wednesday it would cut its global workforce by around 8% as part of a cost reduction plan initially announced in October. Worldline confirms that it has initiated social processes with the relevant employee representative bodies within the Worldline group, it said in a statement.
According to Reuters, investors will be looking to see if Gucci's new creative director Sabato de Sarno can move the needle on the company's financial performance when its owner Caring reports full-year earnings on Thursday. Gucci's sales have lagged rivals such as LVMH-owned Louis Vuitton and Dior in recent years, prompting the company to change artistic direction through the appointment of DeSarno. According to Reuters, an advanced group of Chinese hackers taking aim at U.S. critical infrastructure have been active for as long as half a decade, American and allied intelligence agencies said in a joint statement on Wednesday. The U.S. National Security Agency, U.S. Cyber Watchdog CISA, the FBI, and the Transportation Security Administration said that the group known as Volt Typhoon had quietly burrowed into the networks of aviation, rail, mass transit, highway, maritime, pipeline, water and sewage organizations. According to Yahoo Finance, Disney will report its fiscal first quarter earnings after the bell on Wednesday as CEO Bob Iger attempts to drown out proxy battle noise and focus on profits. The company is widely expected to lose subscribers in the quarter on the heels of another round of price hikes that hit users in October. Streaming profitability, however, should be the main focus as investors will look for execution on cost-cutting initiatives implemented one year ago. According to Reuters, Italy's government will offer targeted tax breaks to help farmers facing hardship, a minister told Parliament on Wednesday, looking to provide support to the sector amid a wave of protests across Europe. Farmers have staged demonstrations to express their anger about low prices for produce, rising costs, cheap imports and constraints imposed by the European Union's drive to fight climate change, demanding action by authorities. According to Yahoo Finance, Snap stock tanked on Wednesday, sinking more than 30% as investors digested another disappointing quarterly earnings report. The Snapchat parent company posted Q4 quarterly revenue of $1.36 billion, below street estimates for $1.38 billion. The company has now missed revenue estimates on six of the last eight reports. And now, it says it expects to lose more money in the current quarter than Wall Street expected, too. According to Reuters, Federal Reserve Bank of Boston President Susan Collins said Wednesday that if the economy meets her expectations the central bank will likely be able to lower rates at some point later this year. But the official did not give any timetable for action and said she will need to see more evidence inflation is moving down to the 2% target before supporting an easing in the central bank's interest rate target. According to Yahoo Finance, Boston Fed President Susan Collins said she needs to see more evidence inflation is coming back to the Fed's 2% target before lowering interest rates, but that those cuts could come later this year. I will need to see more evidence before considering adjusting the policy stance, Collins said in a speech in Boston. Collins is a non-voting member of the Fed's Federal Open Market Committee, which decides whether rates go up or down. According to Reuters, some of the world's top food, drinks and tech companies have struck a sour tone about Chinese demand, deepening investor worries about damage to firms exposed to the country and Beijing's ability to revive the world's second biggest economy. The downbeat comments from companies including Starbucks, Pandora and Carlsberg as they report fourth quarter results come ahead of China's Lunar New Year holiday, usually a busy period for consumer spending. According to Reuters, bumper debt sales from developing economies fueled a net $35.7 billion of foreign portfolio inflows to emerging market fixed income and equities in January, though investors stayed cool on China, the Institute of International Finance said on Wednesday. The IIF Banking Trade Group said non-residents piled some $42.7 billion into emerging market debt last month, the most since June 2021, while equities suffered $6.9 billion of outflows, with net selling out of all geographic regions. According to Reuters, New York Community Bancorp options drew increasingly bearish trading on Wednesday, as the bank's shares extended their recent sell-off. Put contracts that would guard against a plunge in the shares below $2 by mid-March were among the most actively traded, with about 8,000 of them changing hands as the stock fell about 13% to $3.65 on Wednesday morning. March puts at the $3 strike saw the heaviest volume, trading some 12,600 shares. According to Reuters, German defense contractor Rank and Greece's Athens International Airport soared in their market debuts on Wednesday in a boost for Europe's bruised IPO market. Shares in Rank, 
a producer of tank gearboxes, closed at €19.65 Euros Wednesday afternoon, 31% higher than the price paid by investors in a private placement ahead of the listing. According to Reuters, New York Community Bancorp on Wednesday pledged to reduce its exposure in the troubled commercial real estate sector, attempting to reassure investors who have dumped the stock since its earnings report last week. The lender reported a surprise fourth-quarter loss after building bigger provisions for potential loan defaults, primarily because of its CRE exposure. According to Reuters, Wall Street gained on Wednesday, with the benchmark SP500 scaling a new record high, as investors took stock of major corporate earnings and assessed remarks from policymakers for more clues on the outlook for interest rate cuts. Ford rose 3.5% as the automaker increased first-quarter dividend and decided to scale back investments in new capacity for loss-making electric vehicles. According to Yahoo Finance, former President Donald Trump was one many right-wing figures to criticize Bud Light and its parent company over a partnership between the beer maker and transgender social media influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Now the likely GOP nominee appears to be putting the campaign in his rearview mirror. According to Reuters, the European Union's drugs regulator said on Wednesday it will investigate any risks to the availability of medicines processed at Catalan sites that will be sold to Novo Nordisk, part of its mandate to prevent drug shortages. The European Medicines Agency told Reuters in a statement that its medicine shortages single point of contact working party will liaise with member states to gather data on the products manufactured at the sites. According to Reuters, Three U.S. senators on Wednesday urged the Biden administration not to shift radio spectrum assigned to the Defense Department for military radar use in the lower 3 GHz band to 5G commercial wireless use. Republican Deb Fisher, Democrat Maisie Hirono and Independent Angus King, who all serve on the Armed Services Committee, wrote President Joe Biden saying, Pursuing a policy of requiring the Department of Defense to surrender its spectrum for non-federal use would significantly harm DOD's ability to carry out its missions, increase costs, and adversely affect our national security. According to Reuters, China's ousting of its securities watchdog head on Wednesday drew a muted cheer from markets, with investors holding out for bigger measures that would tackle the root of the malaise gripping the world's second-largest economy. Yi Huiman was replaced as chairman of the China Securities Regulatory Commission, the CSRC, with Wu Qing, who has led the Shanghai Stock Exchange and served as a key deputy in Shanghai's municipal government. According to Bloomberg, American Healthcare Right Inc. shares debuted about 7.1% higher than their initial public offering price, after the firm's $672 million issue added to a run of modest performances among U.S. first-time share sales this year. The Irvine, California-based senior housing and assisted living property firm's stock opened at $12.85 each, after the firm sold 56 million shares for $12 each on Tuesday, the bottom of a marketed range. The shares were up 6.2% to $12.75 each at 12.25 p.m. Wednesday in New York trading, giving the company a market value of about $1.6 billion. According to Reuters, the U.S. trade dispute with Mexico over genetically modified corn is expected to be resolved by the end of this year, U.S. Chief Agricultural Negotiator Doug McAllip said at a conference of state agricultural directors on Wednesday. Mexico published a presidential decree in 2020 that said the country would ban GM corn from human diets, arguing it threatens the country's native corn varieties and could pose a threat to human health. According to Reuters, Bottling firm Coca-Cola HBC on Wednesday named company veteran Anastasis Stamouli as its chief financial officer, succeeding Ben Almanzar who would step down from the role in the second quarter of 2024. The appointment of Stamouli, who has spent 16 years with the Switzerland-based company, is effective May 1, it said in a statement. According to Reuters, the Panama Canal sees no need for further vessel transit restrictions until at least April when its authority will evaluate water levels at the end of the dry season, Deputy Administrator Ilya Espino told Reuters. A severe drought last year forced the canal to reduce the number of vessels allowed to pass per day. In December, rains in the last quarter of the year allowed the waterway to suspend further restrictions that would have been applied in January. According to Bloomberg, 
Three Fed officials suggested Wednesday they don't see an urgent case for lowering interest rates, adding to a roster of policymakers in recent days who made clear a cut isn't likely until May at the earliest. Governor Adriana Kugler, Boston Fed President Susan Collins and Minneapolis Fed Chief Neil Kashkari were all noncommittal on when the U.S. Central Bank can start reducing the Fed's benchmark lending rate from a two-decade high, despite a marked improvement in inflation last year. According to Reuters, U.S. drug regulators in November found quality control lapses at the Bloomington, Indiana factory of contract drug manufacturer Catalent, including discovery of a pest on the manufacturing line, according to an inspection report. Novo Holdings, the parent company of Novo Nordisk, on Monday announced it was buying Catalent in a $16.5 billion deal that included its Bloomington plant, which it plans to sell to Novo Nordisk to help it produce its popular weight loss drug Wegovi. According to Bloomberg, Dow Inc., a maker of plastics for packaging, is tapping the green bond market for the first time as it looks to reduce its carbon emissions and plastic waste. It's selling bonds in as many as two parts through its wholly owned subsidiary Dow Chemical Company, according to a person with knowledge of the matter. The longest portion of the offering, a 30-year security, may yield 1.6 percentage points above treasuries, said the person, who asked not to be identified as the details are private. According to Bloomberg, Carlyle Group Inc. Chief Executive Officer Harvey Schwartz said investors shouldn't bet on a slew of rate hikes this year. Data from companies that Carlyle owns show that inflation is materially in check, Schwartz said Wednesday on Bloomberg Television after the private equity giant reported better than expected earnings. According to Reuters, Ryanair is concerned by shortcomings identified by U.S. regulators in a report into the Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9 accident, and increased regulatory supervision is set to slow things down at Boeing, CEO Michael O'Leary said on Wednesday. Ryanair, Europe's largest airline by passenger numbers and one of Boeing's main customers, has ordered over 350 MAX jets in recent years, but has no MAX 9 aircraft. According to Reuters, a U.S. court has nullified the government's latest approvals of certain agricultural weed killers sold by Bayer, BASF and Syngenta, fueling uncertainty among farmers who spray the products on soybeans and cotton genetically engineered to resist them. Environmental activists cheered the court for halting use of the dicamba-based herbicides, which are known to drift away and damage crops that cannot tolerate the chemical. According to Reuters, Members of the Bank of Canada's Governing Council were concerned about cutting borrowing costs too soon amid persistent inflation when they decided to keep the key overnight rate on hold on January 24, minutes published on Wednesday showed. The policy-setting Governing Council was particularly concerned about the persistence of inflation and did not want to lower interest rates prematurely, the minutes said. According to Reuters, Wall Street's enthusiasm about artificial intelligence has NVIDIA on the verge of becoming more valuable than Amazon for the first time in two decades, and the AI chipmaker is not far behind Google owner Alphabet. A 40% surge in NVIDIA so far in 2024 has elevated its market capitalization to $1.715 trillion as of midday trading on Wednesday, only about 3% below Amazon's $1.767 trillion value and less than 6% below Alphabet's $1.812 trillion value, according to LSEG data. According to Yahoo Finance, four years ago, as the 2020 primary elections were getting underway, candidate Joe Biden faced stiff competition from various factions of the Democratic Party. The young upstart Pete Buttigieg won the kickoff vote, the Iowa caucus, with Biden coming in fourth. Bernie Sanders won the second race, in New Hampshire, with Elizabeth Warren second and Biden third. Biden picked up steam after that, but he fought it out with other candidates until Sanders was the last challenger to drop out, in April 2020. President Biden faces no meaningful opposition within his party now as he runs for re-election. But having the field to himself deprives Biden of more liberal competitors that make Biden look moderate by comparison. According to Reuters, the U.S. Congressional Budget Office on Wednesday projected a slightly smaller $1.507 trillion federal deficit for fiscal 2024 as increased revenues from a strong economy and employment offsets higher outlays for clean energy tax credits and interest on the public debt. The CBO said that the deficit will dip this year from $1.695 trillion in fiscal 2023, 
but resume its march upward to $1.772 trillion in fiscal 2025 and reach $2.579 trillion in fiscal 2034. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. government sold a record $42 billion of 10-year notes Wednesday at a lower-than-anticipated yield, a sign of investor confidence that the Federal Reserve will pivot to interest rate cuts this year in response to a growth slowdown. The notes were awarded at 4.093%, compared with a when-issued yield of about 4.105% moments before 1 p.m. New York time, the bidding deadline. The lower yield indicates stronger demand than traders anticipated. According to Reuters, Federal Reserve Governor Adriana Kugler said on Wednesday she is optimistic that inflation will continue to decline, laying out the case for why some of the economy's more persistent price pressures will abate. In her first policy speech since joining the Fed's governing board in September, Kugler held close to the top-line views laid out by the central bank after its meeting last week, that slowing inflation could clear the way for interest rate cuts this year but only after policymakers develop more confidence, inflation will continue to slow. According to Reuters, U.S. farm incomes are forecast to fall sharply for a second consecutive year, as direct government payments shrink, production costs surge and growing supplies of grains and oilseeds send crop prices plunging to multi-year lows, the U.S. Department of Agriculture reported on Wednesday. Declining income could lead to a ripple effect across the rural economy in a presidential election year, as producers become more cautious about making large asset purchases such as new machinery or land. According to Reuters, hedge fund manager William Ackman exited his position in Lowe's after the home improvement retailer earned more than $1 billion in profits for Pershing Square Capital Management's investors, according to an investor update. Lowe's was a highly successful investment for Pershing Square, Ackman wrote to investors, noting he cashed out after a nearly six-year holding period to free up capital for new investments. According to Yahoo Finance, the new, joint venture, sports streaming partnership between Disney's ESPN, Warner Brothers Discovery and Fox could have serious implications on the entire sports ecosystem. In other words, future deals could be a lot cheaper while Wall Street watchers say the partnership tilts the power away from big tech as prices skyrocket across multiple professional and collegiate leagues. According to Yahoo Finance, Ford's latest quarterly results out Tuesday were the latest to underscore the challenge facing an auto industry moving towards an electric future, high prices. We learned that as you scale EVs to 5,000, to 7,000 units a month, and you move into the early majority customer, they are not willing to pay a significant premium for EVs, Ford CEO Jim Farley said on Tuesday's earnings call. According to Reuters, rain was expected to resume in Southern California on Wednesday, bringing with it a renewed threat of mudslides and flooding to a region saturated by record-breaking precipitation over the last several days. Up to one inch of rain was forecast for the Los Angeles area during the afternoon and evening as the atmospheric river storm that drenched Southern California moves east toward the desert southwest, the National Weather Service said. According to Bloomberg, 23andMe Holding Co. Chief Executive Officer Ann Wojcicki is considering splitting the DNA testing company's consumer and therapeutics businesses in an effort to revive a sagging stock price and avoid being delisted. We're exploring different opportunities, she said in an interview this week from the company's headquarters in Sunnyvale, California. 23andMe's shares have traded below the $1 Nasdaq minimum since late last year, and the clock is ticking to regain compliance. According to Reuters, Nigeria goalkeeper Stanley Nuabali saved two penalties in the shootout to guide his side to a 4-2 victory over South Africa following a 1-1 draw on Wednesday and earn a place in the Africa Cup of Nations final. Nigeria had lost five of their previous six semifinals at the Continental Finals but survived some nervous moments to book a place in Sunday's decider against either hosts Ivory Coast or the Democratic Republic of Congo, who meet later on Wednesday. According to Bloomberg, members-only Soho House Company Inc. might just be the next WeWork Inc.-style flop, according to a short report from Glasshouse Research. Shares of the luxury hotels and clubs operator plunged as much as 30% Wednesday, its worst one-day drop since listing, after Glasshouse initiated coverage with a $0 price target. The report questioned the firm's viability given its growing debt and lack of profit. According to Bloomberg, 
Drug developers are capitalizing on the industry's momentum by tapping public investors for the first time, as corporate takeovers and a welcoming market lift optimism about biotechnology. When Kyverna Therapeutics Inc. and Metagenomi Inc. sell shares in the coming days, they'll mark the fourth and fifth biotech initial public offerings on U.S. exchanges in 2024. The first three raised $786 million collectively, in the strongest start for the sector since 2021, data compiled by Bloomberg Show. According to Yahoo Finance, Amgen is among several big pharmaceutical players looking for a way into the newly profitable GLP-1 obesity drug market. Chief Financial Officer Peter Griffith told Yahoo Finance the company is focused on creating an entire pipeline around what is estimated to be up to a $150 billion market. According to Reuters, senior U.S. officials will visit the 2024 election battleground state of Michigan on Thursday to meet with Arab American and Muslim leaders critical of President Joe Biden for not calling for a permanent ceasefire in Israel's attacks on Gaza. The officials include U.S. Agency for International Development Administrator Samantha Power, Steve Benjamin, White House Public Engagement Director, and his deputy, Jamie Citron, a White House official said. According to Reuters, U.S. central bankers want to hold off on cutting interest rates until they have more confidence that inflation is headed down to 2 percent, and on Wednesday gave a range of reasons for feeling little urgency to start easing policy soon or to move quickly once they do. Last week the Federal Reserve held the policy rate steady in the 5.25 percent minus 5.5 percent range, where it has been since last July, and Fed Chair Jerome Powell said there would likely not be enough data by the next meeting, in March, to feel sure they have made enough progress against inflation to reduce borrowing costs. According to Bloomberg, a senior manager at the fund unit of Goldman Sachs Group Inc. says last year's deep sell-off of green stocks may have blinded some equity investors to the growth potential in key corners of the market. Luke Bars, managing director and global head of fundamental equity client portfolio management at Goldman Sachs Asset Management, says he sees evidence that investors are ignoring opportunities to buy in the renewables sector. According to Reuters, a driverless Waymo car collided with a cyclist in San Francisco on Tuesday causing minor injuries and the incident is being reviewed by the state's auto regulator. Waymo, Alphabet's autonomous driving unit, said by email on Tuesday it called the police to the scene and that it was also contacting relevant authorities about the incident. According to Reuters, Mattel missed market estimates for holiday quarter sales and profit and forecast tepid 2024 sales on Wednesday as soft demand for toys overshadows gains from its blockbuster movie, Barbie. Still, the company forecast better-than-expected full-year profit on cooling costs, and announced a share buyback program of $1 billion, following $203 million of repurchases in 2023. According to Reuters, Walt Disney handily beat Wall Street's earnings expectations on Wednesday, lifted by record results at its theme parks and continued cost-cutting efforts, even as revenue fell shy of analysts' estimates. Disney's board of directors also authorized a $3 billion share repurchase program for the current fiscal year, and declared a dividend of $0.45 cents a share, payable on July 25 to shareholders of record on July 8. That represents a 50% increase from the dividend paid in January. According to Reuters, Microsoft is launching Microsoft 365 Copilot tool for employees as it looks to get more developers to use artificial intelligence, Business Insider reported on Wednesday. The company has been running pilot tests to up the usage of AI tools among its community of developers and was planning a wider release of Microsoft 365 to its teams for the first time, the report said, citing an internal message. According to Reuters, Arm Holdings on Wednesday forecast fiscal fourth quarter sales and adjusted profit above Wall Street expectations as customers aim to design new chips for artificial intelligence work, generating higher royalties for the British technology firm. Arm's forecast ranges for its fourth quarter had midpoints of $875 million for sales and $0.30 per share for adjusted earnings, above estimates of $780.3 million and $0.21 per share, according to LSEG data. According to Reuters, PayPal beat Wall Street estimates for fourth quarter profit on Wednesday as more Americans used its payments platform for shopping during the holiday season. This was also the company's first full quarterly results under the stewardship of CEO Alex Chris, 
who is expected to announce plans on strategic initiatives later in the day. According to Reuters, the Canadian dollar strengthened against its U.S. counterpart on Wednesday as Wall Street rallied, but gains for the commodity-linked currency were limited as investors grew skeptical of measures being taken by China to help its ailing economy. The loonie was trading 0.2% higher at 1.3465 to the greenback, or 74.27 US cents, adding to its previous day's gains. It traded in a range of 1.3456 to 1.3493. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets. The relief rally in Chinese stocks continues as the country prepares for the New Year holiday, but before markets shut down the latest inflation figures on Thursday will show whether the economy is any closer to escaping the clutches of deflation. According to Reuters, global equities climbed to a more than two-year peak and the SP500 closed at a record high on Wednesday as strong earnings offset jitters related to U.S. regional banks and China's markets. Bonds yields rose as comments from Federal Reserve officials reaffirmed expectations that the central bank may not cut rates soon. According to Yahoo Finance, Disney CEO Bob Iger officially announced when the company's over-the-top ESPN streaming service will launch, fall 2025. The development comes after news broke Disney's ESPN will team up with Warner Brothers Discovery and Fox to launch a new sports streaming service, which is expected to debut sometime this fall. According to Yahoo Finance, Taylor Swift use heading to Disney+. Plus. On Wednesday, the media conglomerate announced, Taylor Swift, the era's tour, will stream exclusively on its flagship streaming platform and feature five additional acoustic songs, including, Cardigan. According to Reuters, Cody beat Wall Street estimates for second quarter revenue on Wednesday, powered by higher pricing and strong demand for its high-end Burberry and Gucci fragrances and fresh launches of cosmetics in the U.S. during the holiday season. The company's newer products such as Burberry Goddess and CoverGirl Clean Fresh Yummy Gloss helped pull in customers in the U.S. compared to bigger rival Estee Lauder, which flagged feeble demand in the country and is doubling down on new launches and reinventing existing products. According to Reuters, residential real estate investment trust Mid-America Apartment Communities beat estimates for fourth-quarter funds from operation on Wednesday as a lack of supply pressure in some markets in the southeast, such as Georgia, Virginia and South Carolina, modestly pushed up rent prices. Rental supply in the U.S. remains elevated with some parts of the southeast seeing relatively higher rent growth, but there are some pressures in the Sun Belt region. According to Reuters, Meta Platforms has challenged a supervisory fee amounting to 0.05% of its annual worldwide net income aimed at covering EU regulators' costs of monitoring compliance with new European Union rules requiring it to do more to police content. The European Commission has said the Digital Services Act levy applies to 20 very large online platforms, including Meta, Google, Apple and TikTok and two very large online search engines. According to Reuters, more than 100 websites disguised as local news outlets in Europe, Asia and Latin America are pushing pro-China content in a widespread influence campaign linked to a Beijing public relations firm, Digital Watchdog Citizen Lab has found. Spread over websites in 30 countries, the propaganda material is interspersed with news aggregated from local news outlets and Chinese state media, according to a research report the Toronto-based group released on Wednesday. According to Reuters, Colombian banks are expected to show a gradual improvement over 2024 as interest rates ease, ratings agency Fitch said on Wednesday, after a poor performance last year marked by high borrowing costs and volatile markets. Fitch expects asset quality metrics to slowly improve during 2024 and return to acceptable levels by 2025, Fitch said in a note, adding it expects slight pressure on capital ratios due to expected loan growth. According to Bloomberg, Cully Davis, vice chairman of Equity Capital Markets and head of West Coast Technology, Media and Telecom Investment Banking at Jefferies Financial Group Inc., is leaving the firm as soon as this summer, people familiar with the situation said. San Francisco-based Davis will be helping with transition in the next three months, the people said, asking not to be identified as the information isn't public. According to Reuters, China has sought to cheat and steal its way to matching Taiwan in chip technology, 
but has yet to succeed despite investing huge sums, Taiwan's de facto ambassador to Washington said on Wednesday, while holding out the prospect of more Taiwanese semiconductor investment in the U.S. in a wide-ranging interview with Reuters. Taiwan's representative Alexander Yui cast doubt on reports that China's chipmakers are on the cusp of making next-generation smartphone processors, and refuted charges by Donald Trump, the leading Republican candidate for the 2024 U.S. presidential election, that Taiwan was taking American semiconductor jobs. According to Reuters, Everest Group's operating profit more than doubled in the fourth quarter on Wednesday, as the insurer benefited from stronger underwriting and better returns on its investments. Buoyed by employer-guaranteed and government-mandated policies, the demand for insurance remains resilient amid significant corporate and consumer cutback in spending, reinforcing its reputation as recession-proof. According to Reuters, a top Boeing executive on Wednesday urged suppliers to maintain the pace of the current 737 production schedule, but acknowledged that an ongoing Federal Aviation Administration audit of the company's 737 MAX production line could force changes to the schedule. Boeing reaffirmed its 737 master schedule in a January 22 email to its suppliers following the mid-air cabin panel blowout on a MAX 9 earlier that month, Reuters previously reported. According to Bloomberg, Arm Holdings PLC climbed as much as 26% in late trading after the chip designer gave a surprisingly bullish forecast, showing that its push beyond smartphones is helping fuel growth and profitability. Revenue in the three months ending in March will be $850 million to $900 million, Arm said in a statement Wednesday. That compares with an average analyst estimate of $778 million. Earnings will be roughly 30 cents, excluding some items, well ahead of the 21 cent projection. According to Bloomberg, when the U.S. punished Morgan Stanley for leaking upcoming stock trades to favored clients, it kept the list of recipients secret. They include one of Wall Street's biggest players, Citadel. A trader at Ken Griffin's giant hedge fund was among a coterie of executives described anonymously in Morgan Stanley's settlements with the government, according to people with knowledge of the matter. According to Reuters, mediators from the U.S., Qatar and Egypt scrambled to forge a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas in their four-month-old war in the Gaza Strip after America's top diplomat on a Middle East mission said there was still hope for a deal. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said he saw room for negotiation, and a Palestinian Hamas delegation led by senior official Khalil al Haya was due to travel on Thursday to Cairo for ceasefire talks with Egypt and Qatar. According to Bloomberg, Walt Disney Company reported better than expected earnings for its fiscal first quarter and issued an upbeat profit outlook for the year, citing cost-cutting benefits and the strong performance of its international theme parks. Earnings rose to $1.22 a share, excluding some items, Disney said Wednesday in a statement. That beat the 99-cent average of Wall Street estimates. According to Bloomberg, Asian stocks were poised for a mixed open on Thursday even as the SP500 closed at a fresh record within striking distance of 5,000. Australian stocks edged higher in early trading, while futures pointed to Japan equities rising and Hong Kong shares opening lower. The SP500 rose 0.8% on Wednesday and the Nasdaq 100 climbed 1% as traders bet that a solid economy will continue fueling corporate profits. According to Reuters, a federal judge on Wednesday dismissed a lawsuit accusing Apple of overpaying chief executive Tim Cook and other top executives by tens of millions of dollars by miscalculating the value of performance-based stock awards. U.S. District Judge Jennifer Rashan in Manhattan said the iPhone maker described its pay methods in detailed compensation tables in its 2023 proxy statement, precisely, as securities laws and U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission rules require. According to Bloomberg, PayPal Holdings Inc. shares tumbled late Wednesday after the company said it expects earnings to be flat this year as it continues to cut costs and streamline its operations. Shares of the fintech firm slid 7.9% to $58.24 at 6.28 p.m. in New York. The stock had gained 3% this year through the close of regular trading. According to Reuters, United Nations sanctions monitors are investigating dozens of suspected cyber attacks by North Korea that raked in $3 billion to help it further develop its nuclear weapons program, according to excerpts of an unpublished UN report reviewed by Reuters.
The Democratic People's Republic of Korea continued to flout Security Council sanctions. A panel of independent sanctions monitors reported to a Security Council committee, using North Korea's formal name. According to Bloomberg, traders hammered by China's stock route are looking for fresh market signals from one of the country's peak consumer spending seasons. The Lunar New Year holidays, running from Feb 9 to 17 this year, will have investors scouring spending data like travel and box office receipts for signs about the health of the world's second largest economy. Expectations are soft this year, with analysts saying consumers are likely to tighten their belt given the bleak economic outlook. Also, prior year comparisons may set a high bar, as 12 months ago the economy was rebounding strongly from COVID shutdowns. According to Bloomberg, a China stocks rally that's spurred by government support will likely slow the momentum of global funds shift into Japanese equities, according to Nomura Holdings Inc. Japan's large caps have been benefiting from investors switching their holdings out from China, Naka Matsuzawa, chief strategist at Nomura, wrote in a report Wednesday. Funds had headed into Japan due to geopolitics concerns, regulatory uncertainties and pessimism toward the economic outlook, but that may change. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. Energy Department's new mandatory survey to collect data from Bitcoin miners is an abuse of authority by the Biden administration vying to limit the industry, two groups allege. The claim comes after the Energy Information Administration, the statistical arm of the federal agency, reported last week that cryptocurrency mining represented as much as 2.3 percent of the country's entire electricity use in 2023, citing publicly available data. From February to July, the EIA will collect monthly data on cryptocurrency energy use after it was granted emergency clearance to do so. According to Reuters, U.S. natural gas futures have collapsed about 22% so far in 2024, reaching a three-year low on Wednesday as near-record output and mostly mild weather this winter depress heating demand. Low prices are good for consumers who use gas for cooking and to heat homes and businesses. It is also great for companies exporting the fuel via pipelines to Mexico or as liquefied natural gas to the world. According to Reuters, a final burst of heavy rain from a deadly atmospheric river storm doused California's central coast on Wednesday as it headed for Los Angeles, bringing a renewed threat of mudslides and floods to a region soaked by record downpours. Up to one inch of rain was forecast for the Los Angeles area from the impending late evening blast, on top of 6 to 13 inches that fell during a four-day stretch ending at midday Wednesday as the storm center moved through Arizona, the National Weather Service said. According to Bloomberg, SoftBank Group Corp. shares rallied almost 10% after Arm Holdings PLC gave a surprisingly bullish earnings forecast, beating analyst estimates as its push beyond smartphones helps fuel growth. Arm said revenue in the three months ending in March will be $850 million to $900 million, far higher than the average analyst estimate of $778 million. The UK chip designers' shares soared in after-hours trading, bringing the company's value closer to $100 billion. According to Reuters, U.S. drugstore chain Walgreens Boots Alliance on Wednesday said it has cut its stake in pharmaceutical distributor Sencora for the third time in just over six months, pocketing about $992 million. The proceeds include around $942 million from shares sold as well as about $50 million from a concurrent share repurchase by Sencora, formerly Amerisource Bergen. According to Bloomberg, China's deepening stock market slump is even taking its toll on quantitative hedge funds, whose computer models have helped them outperform human traders at rival funds for the past three years. Private quant funds suffered a 7.2% average loss in January, according to Shenzhen Pai Pai Wang Investment Management Company, underperforming the benchmark CSI 300 stock index, which dropped 6.3%. While traditional hedge funds fared even worse, it's a far cry from Quant's stellar 4.9% gain in 2023, when China's main equity gauge tumbled. According to Reuters, Yu Wei Zhangzhou represents a new type of Chinese tourist. Last month, the Shanghai-based fashion influencer had close encounters with reindeer, visited Santa's village and stayed in a glass-enclosed treehouse during a trip that she organized herself to Finland. Very little shopping was involved. According to Bloomberg, consumer spending, 
China's economic stimulus and potentially higher dividend payouts are in focus as Australia's earnings season gathers pace this month. Traders will be keeping an eye on the outlooks of Australia's largest companies amid expectations the Reserve Bank will ease policy this year. Miners' views on sluggish commodity prices and the effectiveness of China's efforts to shore up its economy will also be monitored. According to Bloomberg, Texas Governor Greg Abbott said his state will need to grow its power supply capacity by as much as 15 percent annually to keep up with rising demand from homes and businesses. For every business relocating here, there is an increased demand from our power grid, Abbott, a Republican, said at the NAEP Summit Energy Conference in Houston on Wednesday. We need to be prepared to increase our power supply capability by 10 to 15 percent per year. According to Bloomberg, Chinese stocks have staged a nascent recovery from a $7 trillion route, thanks to intensifying rescue efforts as authorities seek to prevent the market from slumping for a fourth straight year. The benchmark CSI 300 index has gained 5.2% so far this week. The rebound came after a quickening drumbeat of policy support, which included replacing the market regulator and wider trading curbs as well as state buying of major bank stocks. News that regulators plan to brief President Xi Jinping on markets also fueled optimism. According to Bloomberg, last spring, cargo containers began appearing near electricity substations connected to the recently built Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, Africa's largest. Inside were stacks of powerful, energy-guzzling computers. It was a telltale sign that Chinese Bitcoin miners, having bounced from country to country in search of cheap power and benign regulations since Beijing cast them out two years before, had arrived in the Horn of Africa. According to Bloomberg, staffers at China's main securities regulator had been working around the clock for weeks on ways to prop up the nation's tumbling stock market when the bombshell dropped. Late Wednesday, the official Xinhua news agency reported that their boss Yi Huiman had been ousted becoming the biggest Communist Party casualty of a $5 trillion sell-off that's undermining confidence in the fragile economy. According to Reuters, oil prices rose on Thursday after Israel rejected a ceasefire offer from Hamas, as talks continued to try to end the Gaza conflict and wider Middle East tensions that have kept the market on edge since October. Signs of solid U.S. fuel demand also bolstered the market's upward trend this week. According to Bloomberg, oil steadied after a three-day advance, with prices supported by gains in wider financial markets and lingering risks in the Middle East. West Texas Intermediate held below $74 a barrel after climbing 2.2% over three sessions, while Brent crude closed above $79. A rally in global stocks is helping to support appetite for risk assets, including crude, even as the Federal Reserve plays down the chance of imminent interest rate cuts. According to Bloomberg, Fosun International Limited has revived a plan to sell Hong Kong-based peak reinsurance company after failing on a previous attempt, according to people familiar with the matter. BNP Paribas Sa is helping the Chinese conglomerate find a buyer for its majority stake in the business, the people said, asking not to be identified because the matter is private. Fosun is potentially seeking a valuation of about $1 billion for the company known as Peak Re, the people said. According to Reuters, Fika Juliana Putri, a 19-year-old shopkeeper in East Jakarta, plans to vote in Indonesia's presidential election next week for a once-feared former special forces commander. She likes him, she says, because he's cuddly. A doe-eyed cartoon version of General Prabowo Subianto, produced using generative AI, is emblazoned on billboards across Indonesia. It's reproduced on sweatshirts and stickers, and featured prominently on hash Prabowo dash tagged posts that have some 19 billion views on TikTok. According to Reuters, China's consumer prices suffered their steepest fall in more than 14 years in January while producer prices also dropped, underscoring the persistent deflationary risks facing the world's second biggest economy as it struggles to recover. The consumer price index fell 0.8% in January from a year earlier after a 0.3% drop in December, data from the National Bureau of Statistics showed on Thursday. The CPI rose 0.3% month-on-month from a 0.1% uptick the previous month. According to Reuters, most Asian markets tracked Wall Street higher on Thursday, 
but Chinese stocks were battling to sustain a rally after data raised concerns about deflationary pressures in China and suggested the economic slowdown may have further to run. Japan's Nikkei surged 1.5%, while MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan rose 0.2%, with gains in Australia and South Korea being eroded by a 0.2% fall in Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index. According to Bloomberg, a rally in Chinese shares continued Thursday after authorities signaled a stronger resolve to stem a $7 trillion route via a surprise move to replace the head of the country's securities regulator. The onshore benchmark CSI 300 index rose as much as 0.7%, after Beijing announced that Wu Qing, a banking and regulation veteran, will replace Yi Huiman as chairman of the China Securities Regulatory Commission. Smaller stocks rallied harder, with the CSI 1000 gauge for the sector surging 4.6% at one point. According to Bloomberg, China's commodities markets are heading into the Lunar New Year break on a glum note, with deflation embedded on both the consumer and producer sides of the economy. Weak aggregate demand is the central issue for policymakers, but last year's binge on imports has left a lot of commodities looking oversupplied as well. That's particularly true for energy, which saw record hauls of coal and oil and a big increase in natural gas. Warmer weather and tepid industrial demand are likely to pressure power markets going forward. Crude consumption is also expected to soften once the usual increase in holiday travel is out of the way. According to Bloomberg, a top Bank of Japan official said it's hard to see the bank raising its policy rate continuously and rapidly even after the negative interest rate is ended. Even if the bank were to terminate the negative interest rate policy, it is hard to imagine a path in which it would then keep raising the interest rate rapidly, BOJ Deputy Governor Shinichi Uchida said Thursday in a speech to local business leaders in Nara, western Japan. According to Reuters, legislation aimed at increasing South Korea's import-export lending to support huge new defense sales has stalled amid partisan deadlock ahead of a divisive parliamentary election, officials and analysts said. South Korea's ruling and opposition parties have both introduced bills to boost the state bank's equity capital to 25 trillion minus 35 trillion won, raising the lending limit to 10 trillion minus 14 trillion won, as the country seeks to expedite Poland's $22 billion weapons purchase. According to Bloomberg, Indonesia successfully overcame its fragile five days and survived a risky money printing exercise to become a key emerging market for investors. Now its status as a fund favorite is under threat from an upcoming presidential election. As the February 14 vote draws near, some rupee bondholders see the risk of a relaxation of the fiscal discipline that had underpinned a 10% gain in the notes last year. T. Rowe Price is underweight on Indonesian securities while Pictet Asset Management has reduced its holdings of 10-year sovereign debt. According to Reuters, Japan's 10-year government bond yield came off its early high to trade lower on Thursday, as investors were relieved by comments from Bank of Japan Deputy Governor Shinichi Uchida. Uchida said in his speech in Western Japan earlier in the day that the central bank is unlikely to raise interest rates aggressively, even after ending its negative interest rate policy. According to Bloomberg, Apple Inc.'s limited release of the Vision Pro headset is fostering a resale market that's pricing the device far beyond its $3,500 starting price. On Japan's Mercari marketplace, the base 256GB model sold for 800,000 yen, sellers on China's Taobao are asking 36,000 yuan and there's one seller on Singapore's Lazada seeking 8,500 Singapore dollars for the device. In Hong Kong's bustling Mong Kok, an electronics importer specializing in getting gadgets early asks for 35,800 Hong Kong dollars, with the price shifting on a daily basis. His advice. Best to wait. According to Reuters, the world just experienced its hottest January on record, continuing a run of exceptional heat fueled by climate change, the European Union's Copernicus Climate Change Service said on Thursday. Last month surpassed the previous warmest January, which occurred in 2020, in C3S's records going back to 1950. According to Reuters, beaten-up Chinese stocks were set for a fourth day of gain on Thursday after a change of leadership at the market regulator, shoring up expectation of further support measures as China heads into a long Lunar New Year holiday this week. 
The blue chip CSI 300 index pulled further away from last week's five year low after fresh vows of support by state linked buyers and Bloomberg reporting that President Xi Jinping would meet regulators earlier this week. According to Reuters, the Bank of Thailand is ready to cut rates if consumption falls sharply, a senior official said on Thursday, a day after it kept monetary policy unchanged amid pressure from the government to ease. If we look at the numbers and private consumption falls sharply and there is a clear change, that is an important factor in considering key rates, BOT senior director Sakapap Panyanukul told a local television program. According to Reuters, SoftBank Group backed Cohesity told Reuters on Wednesday it agreed to acquire the data protection business of information technology company Veritas, in a deal that sources said is worth about $3 billion, including debt. Cohesity has raised about $1 billion from investors, including Haveli Investments, Premji Invest and Madrona, to help fund the transaction, one of the sources said, requesting anonymity because the companies are not disclosing financial terms. According to Bloomberg, Pakistan suspended mobile phone services nationwide Thursday as voters began casting ballots in a general election, saying the measure was an attempt to maintain order ahead of expected turmoil around the controversial polls. Given recent surge in terrorist incidents, it has been decided to shut mobile services nationwide temporarily to maintain the law and order situation and tackle threats, the nation's interior ministry said in a statement issued just before polling centers opened at 8 a.m. local time. According to Bloomberg, China's consumer prices fell last month at the fastest pace since the global financial crisis as the world's second-largest economy struggles to shake off persistent deflation pressures. The consumer price index dropped 0.8% in January from a year ago, the National Bureau of Statistics said Thursday, the weakest since September 2009. The drop was worse than economists' expectations for a 0.5% decline. According to Bloomberg, Carmen Lee is back in Ipoh, her hometown in northwestern Malaysia, after a seven-and-a-half-hour bus ride from Singapore for the upcoming Lunar New Year. The Western Singapore employee has another reason to celebrate this festive season. An all-time high local dollar that makes everything that much cheaper against the ringgit. It's really going crazy, Lee said of the exchange rate. It's like a bonus. During Chinese New Year we buy soft drinks, beer and invite friends over, and this really helps. You can buy more.